I decided to run a competition without a compass. Now, why would I do that? To learn this, stay with me in this video and I will explain everything. And before we get to it, I just want to mention that this is Into the Forest I Go, a channel when we talk about orienteering and developing orienteering skills, talking with amazing people from the orienteering community. So hopefully you will find something interesting over here for you. If uh, you want to support the channel, consider subscribing. And also, if you want to support us financially, then the links are in the description of this video and you can support us, for example, through Patreon. And now, back to this video. Let's talk about running without a compass. Um, so I did this to challenge myself a little bit because the competition that I was going to, I was attending it after a two-week break, so I knew I will not be able to run with full speed. I actually had it in my head that I'm going to be walking up the steeper hills just to save my Achilles that is giving me some troubles lately. So because I knew I will not be developing my full forest speeds, I wanted to challenge myself a little bit, both on the sprint distance, which was on Friday, and then on two forest distances in Saturday and Sunday. So I will tell you about the challenge for the sprint distance. It was different than not having a compass, although I didn't use the compass during the sprint distance as well. But for the forest, I decided that I'm going to run the competition without even taking the compass with me. Now, it's not only about challenging yourself because running without the compass can actually be quite an interesting training method for particular specific reasons. So using the compass during an orienteering race, I feel like this is a very strong and necessary essential skill that you want to have. So why would you try running without the compass? Well, running without the compass will force you to focus on some other orienteering elements that maybe you feel that you're lacking in. So for example, reading details from the map. When you're running without the compass, you have to be more aware of everything that surrounds you so that you are able to correct your direction based on those things. You also need a little bit more confirmation along the way when you're traveling from one control to another. So again, it will force you to read a little bit more detail. Also, if you have troubles with identifying proper features in the terrain, because you are reading more details from the map, it will also force you to look around more and identify more forest features uh, when you're passing by them. So this is also something that will help you in that regard. I mean, not using the compass. And another interesting aspect that running without the compass in this case might be useful for is to just make some training sessions or competitions harder because you want to be able to push yourself so that you are able to develop, right? So just like Thierry Jojo, for example, at some point in his career has been running lots of night forest races because he felt that day racing is not as challenging as it, as he needed it to be. You can, for example, try running some competitions without the compass. Does it have any drawbacks? So I think it does. I think it does and I don't recommend doing it too often. And the reason is habits. You want, as an orienteer, you want to have habits and you want to automate as many things as possible and there are several habits around the compass several habits that use the compass and if you will start running too many races without the compass those habits will will start to get uh, get lost and you will have to relearn them which you don't want to do because it's just a waste of time so it's fun from time to time but definitely don't do it too often because then it will be damaging to your general orienteering skills. Who needs the compass anyway? Well, uh, do you still use the compass? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you use the compass? Well, if you, you have a rich you study, you have to go on. Like a straight line, just, so... Just, you know, you know where the north is, like it's over there. <laughs> where I don't know it? where the north is. It's over there. Yeah, but the compass is just like, it's easier. 
somehow. But if you know where the north is, what do you need the compass for? Well, you don't, but I don't know where the north is. It's there. Well, now I know, okay. <laughs> 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 How do you think I'm going to do about the compass? Uh, well, I think it'll be good. Like most of the routines are pretty easy without the compass. Uh, I don't need it. I don't use the compass. Uh, I use it just to make sure where I am. But like, um, I think I would like bear through without it. Uh, but on some routines, like the ones that you have to go in a straight line to the control, it might be a little bit challenging because you have to come up with another idea to like um, go to the control without using. Compass. So how do you do that? Well, you of course have to navigate by the elements that are, maybe some hills, maybe uh, some trees, uh, distinguished trees or, or something that is... Ooh, distinguished there. trees. No <laughs> way I'm going to use that. Yeah, maybe not that, but, but there are some things you can use, especially the contours. I think this is the thing that you want to Exactly, like, I am going follow. to be using mainly yeah. the contours, especially in this kind yeah, of terrain. Here, here there quite, are a lot of it's hills. It's quite hilly. Yeah. So, I think the contours are the way to go. Well, I think you'll do just fine. It's fine, no problems at all? No problems at all, yes. Why do you think so? Because of the terrain or because of my skills? Because of your skills. And I think there are no, not many green areas. So, not really... No place to get lost, really, without the compass. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, I don't Maybe know. Maybe I can prove you wrong. <laughs> Maybe. I'll do my best. I have a question. How was it after the first forest race without the compass? Well, it was not as easy as I suspected, but it was mm. as challenging and interesting as I thought it's going to be. So okay. I had to put a lot of thought into what I'm going to navigate by. Mm -hmm. And it definitely wasn't the perfect race. Yeah, so did you have any major problems? I think uh, after the race, I would say that there was definitely one place where I felt that I'm lacking the compass. Okay. After doing the analysis, I think that there are two places like this. So yeah. the first one was when I was going to control number seven and I was leaving um, a, a stream and a big gully mm -hmm. and you left in I, the wrong direction. Yeah, so, so I focused mostly on the mm -hmm. contours and I was thinking, okay, I need to go slightly up, but then I didn't control the direction and I could have, based on the, on the line of the okay. stream, I, I could have controlled the direction better, I think. So that was the first place where I went a lot away from the line, which could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. And then when I was going to number 14, the longest leg, on this course, at some point towards the end of the leg, I felt that I don't know exactly where I am. I, okay. I, I was like, okay, I, I'm within 50 meters of where I thought I, I, I was supposed to be, but I wasn't sure. And then because of this lack of confidence, I was definitely running slower. I my plan was vague, so it wasn't precise. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe I'll see this, maybe I'll see that. And eventually okay. I got to the path where I wanted to be, but I wasn't sure exactly where I am on the, on the path. I wasn't sure if I am on the right path. And then uh, even though I started running straight to the control, I found a knoll on the way, which wasn't on the map, but there was a, a knoll in the other place on the map that was that looked exactly with the surrounding and all like the one okay. I found so I I decided that maybe I'm in a wrong place I went back to the path I went a little bit further to the turn of the path I found a gully so then I realized okay I was in the right spot and then I continued back to the control which I think was a loss of about two minutes from the knoll but I also lost at least half a minute by lack of confidence mm -hmm. uh, earlier, even, even before this mistake. So these were the two places where I think it could have gone a lot better. So some hot impressions right after the race in terms of using the compass and practicing navigating by features and contours. It was a lot of fun and there was there were definitely more places 
today where, where when I wished I had a compass with me. But at the same time, unfortunately, the race ended in my disqualification because I skipped one of the controls, just omitted it. Just two controls became one at some point and I didn't punch number 11 because I thought I am at number 11 while punching number 10 and I went straight to number 12. So that sucks, uh, but it is what it is. And now back at home safely, let's take a look at day number three from the analysis standpoint. So I began the race pretty steadily. I went around over here because of the bushes. Number two, quite easy really, just follow the contours, control the road. Number three, very easy. Number four, very interesting because I didn't want to go too much down. So I went from the right um, over here at this point, I found the control in this very narrow galley, so I knew exactly where I am. And then I simply continue, con continued along the contour more or less. And at this point in time, again, a, a perfect confirmation where I am. And I knew that I had to have to climb up slightly. I did it a little bit too late, but that was, that was okay. Not really uh, big of a problem. Then I followed the um, paths pretty nicely to number five and number six. Um, not no problems at all really number seven very easy number eight very easy and then number nine was the first one in a while that has been a little bit challenging I went from the right side which proved to be a good decision because the white forest over here allowed me to control exactly where I'm going and what do I see but then unfortunately to number 10 I went a little bit too fast I didn't control too or, or enough details and I landed up by after crossing two streams over here, right? So I went one stream, two, second stream, and then I stopped over here next to this path and I was trying to figure out what's going on. And at this point in time, unfortunately, I started to look at control number 11 instead of control number 10. After the stream, after the stream, in a galley, in a galley. So it kind of looked the same. And unfortunately, my gaze just stopped on this one and I was trying to figure out what's going on, where I am. I had problems with it. So you will see me going back to the stream a little bit. Then I made a decision to correct the direction because I thought I might be a little bit to the right. So I went this way and unfortunately, or fortunately, I saw the control, I punched it and didn't realize that I'm still missing control number 11 and went straight to number 12 as you will see me doing over here. So I'll speed it up a little bit like this because 12, 13, 14 weren't really any challenge. Number 15 was another mistake that I did on the direction. So again, if I would have the compass over here, it would probably work. Uh, my plan was to go rather close to the line, find this split in, in the paths and I thought that I was passing this path and I saw these turns but apparently it wasn't the case, judging by the track that I have. I also thought that I saw the split in the path, this one, but it, now I'm think, thinking that it might have been this and the erosion gully. Maybe they looked like a split in the path. And unfortunately, because of this, my direction was not perfect. And when I came over here and I saw the other side, I saw the stream going on the other side, the split of the stream. So I figured, oh, I am too low and I had to climb up, which unfortunately cost me quite a lot because the terrain was very steep over there. And I went down before, well, not all the way down, but um, significantly down before realizing what's going on. So it wasn't really great climbing back up to the control. But in terms of navigation, no real problems after this one, really. The next control was easy and um, the the, all the way to the finish line really without any mistakes. Well, okay, small mistake to number 18, but uh, I wasn't really thinking about the course at this point in time anymore. So as you can see, all in all, quite a fruitful session, I would say. Some interesting things and mistakes to think about and to take into account while developing my orienteering skills even further. And if you are thinking about using these kind of training sessions for your own uh, for your own benefits i totally recommend it because it has been a lot of fun definitely and i felt challenged during this competition despite of the fact that i was trying to run not that fast uh, the third day I, I think i went a little bit too fast compared to what was my my goal for this day but you know it is what it is and it's, it's not easy sometimes to pull the brakes and go as slow as you want it to be now to sum it up, it's been so much fun that I would even be happy to repeat it during the next competition. But because of the thing that I mentioned earlier, so the fact that 
at some point in time I will start start to break my compass using habits. Uh, I don't want to do this too often, so the next competition I will run normally, but you know, I, I can still apply these kind of training and during uh, some training sessions or some competitions somewhere in the future, depending on how it fits my training schedule as well, because I feel like this is a good um, a good thing to use while you're not running full speed, because when you're going full speed, you should use this oppor opportunity to actually put into practice some other things which would require you to use the compass all the way. If this has been helpful and useful and you've learned something, consider subscribing if you're not subscribed yet, giving the like to the video and if you have if you did have an opportunity to run without the compass either because you've planned it or maybe because you forgot to bring the compass to the competition or to the start or you broke the compass during the race let me know in the comments i'm sure there are some interesting stories hidden out there thank you so much for watching i'll be seeing you in the next one